Hello everyone and welcome back. Today uh, we've got a pretty basic video for you here. I have a set of measurements taken uh, from a friend of mine and I'm going to use them to show you how to create a basic frequency correction filter. Okay, you can apply this filter in your signal path on the desktop or in a digital audio workstation. Um, whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm just going to be showing you the, the process of creating the filter. And then in another video, I'll go over how to actually implement this and uh, apply it to your output signal. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is um, go through this and, and show you what my settings are. And then I'll get to work on creating the filters. Okay, so let's first go up to the preferences and check out what I'm doing here. All right, on the equalizer tab, uh, make sure this says full range speaker. Uh, don't worry about bass management or anything else. Just make sure this says full range. Okay. Now down here for room curve, this is important. We want uh, these numbers need to be the same. All right. It doesn't matter what they are necessarily. Just make them the same. Okay. Then this doesn't matter. And then your slope, I'll explain this in a little bit, but let's just use 0.4 and 0.4 as the starting point. Uh, make sure this is checked here. And then for this tutorial, we're going to select generic as the equalizer type. Uh, you can use rephase if you want, uh, but just for this tutorial, I'm going to use generic and it will be fine. Okay, over here on analysis, uh, these are just the settings that I normally use. I use these all the time. Uh, these settings were not used to take the measurements we're seeing, at least as far as I know, because I didn't actually uh, record these measurements. This is, again, uh, a friend of mine uh, who did this. Uh, but these are the ones that I normally use, so feel free to copy these when you are making your own filters, okay? All right, now, this is my left channel, this is my right channel, okay? I'm essentially going to be doing the same thing for both channels. We'll start with the left one, okay? Now make sure you have that selected over here. And uh, there's a, there is a way to do this all at once, but I'm just going to go through and show you how to do it here. What we want to do is apply psychoacoustic filter to the left channel. Come up here to EQ. Now here you can see I've kind of already done this, uh, but what I can do is come in here and start over and show you what I did. So this is what you'll see when you first pull up the window. All right, here's my uh, original response, my smooth, my psychoacoustic smooth response. And I have up here, generic as the equalizer type, full range speaker again, and this is from the preferences over here. This just gets pulled from the prefs. Okay, I have room curve added here, so I check this. These settings all mirror what's in the preferences window. And then here, target level, I have set to 70. Now, generally speaking, you want to set this at the lowest point in your frequency response, okay? But if I come over here and look at the right channel, and I'll have to go through this and uh, clear this out as well. Oop, I didn't smooth it. So let's go to psychoacoustic EQ. Now see here, I'm below the lowest point. Okay, so basically I'm compromising. Okay, so the, the target is above this dip here, but it is below all of these here. Okay, so I just picked something that's in the middle. That's all I did. Now, uh, leaving these settings the same, make sure your range is 20 to 20K. And you can use, you can start with these settings here. You can change them if you want, but these are the ones that I like to use. So uh, we'll stick with those. Make sure these are both checked. And then what you'll want to do is match target, uh, match the response to the target. So do this and then give it a minute to calculate your filter response. Now the uh, slope of the target is up to you. I like to use 0.4 or 0.5 as my slope. So up here, uh, we're gonna use 0.4 today, but if you wanna use 0.5 or even 0.6 for these, let me just show you what happens. Let's try 0.6. Now take a look at the target over there in the window. You see how the slope it gets a little bit more extreme. It gets steeper. Okay, this essentially 
generates more base energy and less high frequency energy. Okay, so the highest these, the higher these are, um, the more slope there is. Okay, so you'll you'll end up with uh, more low end and less high end. So it is up to you to play with this and determine which slope you like the best. It might not hurt to start with uh, values like this, 0.5. Okay, and then all you have to do is redo this stage and it will recalculate your filter for you. Um, the overall slope of this determines the tone of the filter and this is personal preference here. So you can use 0.4 or 0.5 like I'm doing here to, you know, to start off, see what this sounds like to you. If you feel like it's a little too bright and there's not enough bass, make these numbers bigger. Go to 0 0.6, 0 0.6. If that's still not enough, go to 0 0.7, 0 0.7. At some point, you're going to think to yourself, oh, well, it's too dark in the top end now and I'm hearing too much low end, right? Okay, so maybe you're at 0 0.7, 0 0.7 when you say that to yourself. So just back it off. Go to 0 0.6 or maybe back to 0.5 and, and leave it there. That's how you find out what your preference is. Okay, uh, let's just leave this at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 where it is. And um, we'll go from there. Okay, so this created my response. You can see my original response here and my predicted response here. Notice how it's significantly lower in volume. And that's simply because we cannot boost these nulls. Okay, we have to bring everything else down to the level of the nulls. And that's, I could get into that. It's really kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated subject talking about how all of this works. But for the sake of argument, to make things simple, just go by this principle. You have to lower, in other words, attenuate everything above the nulls down more or less to the level of the nulls in order to do this properly. All right, so this gives us a, uh, a result which we can put into the window by clicking that uh, generate measurement from predicted button. Now that puts this down here. So this shows us the result of the filter. And now we can do this for the other side. So let's do this to the right side. Same thing, I've got the same values. Make sure these are all the same. Make sure that the equalizer is also the same. Make sure these are the same. Match response to target. And it'll give us a set of filters for the right speaker. All right, again. Oh, I made a mistake, didn't I? This is why it's good to double check yourself. Remember, I made the last one at 0.5, right? I'm sure you will undoubtedly do this at some point, so uh, don't worry about it. If you notice you've made a mistake, just fix it. It takes five seconds to do this. Say okay. It will recalculate the filter. And now we have everything in line. So we'll generate a measurement from predicted for this. Close this window. Okay, now I've used 0.5 for both. That's why I changed it. So this is what we've got. Uh, now these are just previews, essentially. This is what you can expect to see if you were to measure again with the filters in place. All right, it's no longer gonna look like a mess. Uh, you'll get this nice linear response, which is what you want. This is the ideal situation here. Okay, now, since we're not doing anything further than this, I mean, this is as far as you need to go for frequency response correction. All we have to do is export the filters that generated these measurements as an impulse response. So the way to do that is to come up to File, go to Export, and this one right here in the middle, Export Filters Impulse Response as Wave. This one right here. Click this. Make sure this is stereo. Uh, for the left channel, you're going to select 01 main left. In other words, your, your original left measurement for the right one, you just select this. Okay, so basically it's this 01 main right there. Make sure that says 32-bit float. Leave this off. And then select the sample rate that you want it to be exported to. So in my case, uh, my playback here is 48. So I'm just going to leave that there. But if your playback is at 96, you would just check this. If your playback is 44.1, then you're just going to select this. It will generate 
three sets of filters or three independent filters, okay? So in my case, I'm just doing 48K. So I will click OK. And then I've already done this, but like I said, so I'm just going to overwrite this. Uh, but name it whatever you want, something descriptive so that you will um, be able to find it, so you'll know what it is, be able to identify it, and then save. I'm going to overwrite my previous one because I already went through this and, and did it once. All right, so that's it. Now, all you have to do, if you want to check the filter, you don't have to do this. This part is optional. But if you want to check it, you can import impulse response, select that filter that we just made, open it up, uh, select all here. That way it pulls in both channels and you'll see them over here. Channel one is the left, channel two is the right. Okay. Now notice how they get put up here. Now check out what's happening. I'm going to hide these previews so that now we are only looking at the uh, filters and the original response. Notice how the filter is essentially the inverse of the measured response. And that's important because this is the response you get when the music or sound or whatever it is, is played back in your room. And what you're trying to do is turn this into this this right here. And the way you do that is by applying the inverse of the response to the signal as it's being played back. Okay, so this, uh, these two measurements here, this is the left and the right channel of my filter. You put this filter in your signal path and the sound will come out corrected. Okay, and that's it. So now all you have to do is load that wave file, the one I imported here, into your convolver, and off you go.